Good morning, everyone. Thank you for inviting me back again. And I am very glad to be able to share God's Word with you. Now, this morning, if you have your Bibles with you, please turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. We are living in uncertain times. So many things have changed in such a short period of time. Many things are unsure. But we know one thing, though. The Word of God is our sure foundation. He has given it to the children of Israel, and He has given it to us. In your hands this morning, brothers and sisters, we are going to read some of the text that perhaps we seek God to comfort us, to encourage us, and to help us move along in such uncertain times. Deuteronomy chapter 8 is one of those times when the children of Israel, as they came out of Egypt, they didn't go into the promised land, and they wandered for 40 years. And now this is the new generation that came out of the wilderness. And they are all seated by the eastern shore of the Jordan River. Moses is giving them a revision lesson. Why? Because things will change from here on. The moment they cross the River Jordan, everything is going to change. How they trust God and what is going to happen there in all their battles, including the inheritance of the land that God had promised them to Abraham, and then to Isaac, and to Jacob. And here they are, looking across to the far, that would be their future. It is an uncertain future. Why? Because there are so many nations in there that will block them. They are going to dispossess them, and they are going to take over as an inheritance. But how are they going to do it? This sort of uncertainty reflects a little bit of how we are today. Our world today is really uncertain. The things that we do today is very unusual. It's very different. Many people have already said that this new thing that we have, this new environment we have, this new requirements that we have, that would be the new norm, the new normal, because things have changed and things will continue to change. In the business world, there is this saying, the only constant is change. Yes. Even in our lives today, we are constantly changing, whether it's our health, whether it's our age, whether it's our memory, whether it's our relationships, whether it's the job that we do, everything will continue to change. But how we manage the change makes the difference. And the only way to manage change is that we can hold on to the one being, the one we call God, Jehovah, our Elohim, our God. He doesn't change so that we can be confident with what he says and that his words should guide us in a ever-changing world. Well, our future is really uncertain. The future of the children of Israel, although in a promise, is yet unsure. So let us read Deuteronomy chapter 8 as a revision, but Moses gave them a background in principle. How do you live? And he keeps repeating this. One of the things that you will notice in the book of Deuteronomy is that Moses kept repeating this key words so that they will not forget. 
I think we are very similar to the children of Israel. We have short memory. We get excited and then after a while, we forget why we got excited. When we live in times of difficulty and as God leads us, we are fervent. But when times are good, we tend to forget God. We are very much like the children of Israel. And so Moses is going to remind them. And I trust this morning it would be God reminding you and I. Why? Because in a world of change, God's words are sure. So that we can remember and we can hold on to because it's from God. And that's what He wants us to do as much as He wants the then children of Israel to do. Let us read this passage and I would like to share with you how we can gather our thoughts and gain our confidence because our confidence cannot be on ourselves. It cannot be on our government and it cannot be on others. Things will change. We need wisdom, but we certainly need comfort and leadership from God. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1. Every commandment I command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. Take a pause with me. Moses is describing to them in the last seven chapters, he had so many commandments of God. And I would encourage you to go read the first seven chapters. Don't just read chapter eight, although we do it today, that you should have a very good handle of what commandments have been given. Every commandment, all the orders which I, Moses, have given you today, commanded you today, you must observe, no, you must be careful to observe. Unfortunately, in our English translations, we have missed the point. Be careful to observe has two, two very important words in there, which we don't see. It literally means to keep or protect and preserve and to do it. You can't see that here. The word is to protect, to shamar. And it's there. Be careful to observe is to shamar and to asa, To guard, to keep, and to preserve. And then to do what we are told. These are two very different actions. Unfortunately, when we read the English Bible, we, we, we really can't get a handle of that. So let me unpack this. The first thing that Moses wants us to remember, and that's God telling it through Moses, is to keep. We are to keep God's commandments. Typically, when we hear of keeping, we tend to imagine ourselves doing something about it. But that's a modern day thinking. The word keep is to guard, to protect, to make sure that the commandments of God are not violated, are not abused, are not forgotten, are not misused or misquoted or misplaced. That's guarding. And when we guard, we preserve it just like an heirloom. We keep it, we make sure it's good, we remember it, and we pass it down to the next generation so that they too will do the same, to guard it, to keep it, so that they could pass it down to the next generation. Now the second word in this sentence here is to do. See, to keep is to preserve, to do is to act on it. Now that's our modern day thinking. We only think of acting on it. But God wants us to preserve it, to know it, 
to make sure it's not abused, it's not done wrongly, know all the principles around it and preserve it to pass it down. That's number one. Number two, it is to do something about it. To, after we know it, we better do it to make sure we please God according to what He wants. You see, we tend not to remember all these things. In a world of change, the first thing we need to remember is the things that won't change. God's words won't change. We have had these words since the time of Moses, and now we read it in English. And so it's so important for us to hold on to God's words. And when we learn it, we study it, we memorize it, we hear it, but more importantly, remember, we need to take this and teach it to the next generation. That's keeping. That's keeping. When somebody in your ancestry gave your great-great-great-grandmother an heirloom ring, so to keep it within the family. And so what do you do? You make sure that it's not lost, it's not forgotten, it's kept safe so that you pass it down to your great-great-grandmother and then it passes it down all the way and perhaps to you or to your daughter. That's keeping. I hope that will get us to be clear. God's word is not to be forgotten. God's word is to be studied. God's word is to be known. In our generation, we must do our part. How much do we know of God's word? Although we read here every commandment that God through Moses has commanded us, what do we know of God's commandments? That's a very important question that only you can answer. But I would encourage you, it is never too late to know God's word. But first things first, when we study the word, when we learn more about the word, we have knowledge of the word, we must keep the word to protect it and to guard it, to make sure we have it correct. That's important. And then we know how to pass it down to the next generation. But number two is important, but it's after knowing. Are we doing something about it? That's the important thing. We need to examine ourselves. Doing God's commandments is all the time. What's the point of doing God's commandments? Can't we just pass it down? No. Because by doing it, we will know God better. That's the point. Doing it is not about yes, no, check box, you know. That's not our lives. That's not the intent that God had. God wants us to have this relationship with Him so that through knowing His commandments, knowing His words, we know what would please God and we will know what would offend God. And by knowing what to do and what not to do, obviously, we will be able to find favor or grace in His sight, His eyes. And then He will bless us. See, in this world of change, we still long for God's blessings because He will never change. He wants to bless us. But until we do what He wants and avoid those that He doesn't want us to do, remember, to keep and to do, there's nothing much God can say. Look at this. When, we, when they do this, God is saying that they or you, talking to the Israelites, may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which is their change, of which the Lord, Jehovah, swore to your fathers. The blessing that they are about to gain by trusting God, by keeping His commandments and doing it, didn't start with them. Just as us today, it didn't start with us. We are reading what God has promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob so that we too can trust God the same way they did. Now, long story short, they went in and they possessed the land and they inherited it. Why? Based on God's words. 
That is what God is saying through Moses. When you be careful to observe, to keep and to do God's commandments, God is going to make happen what God has promised and swore to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. You see, what does this tell us? God is a trustworthy God. When he tells us his commandments, it is not to burden us. It is to help us know God. Remember I said, it is not about all the knowledge that we have. The knowledge that we have, if we don't know God better, has no value. Really, it has no value. What are we passing down to the next generation? Not blank words, not words with no meaning. You're passing down to the next generation the commandments to have a relationship with the true and living God. That's the test that Israelites have. Perhaps we are also in this test, how we live in this time of uncertainty. In verse 2, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2, he says, and you shall remember. Remember what? You know the word remember is so important. It's to bring to mind. God remembers us and we pray that God remembers us. But God remembers the Israelites. And God wants the Israelites to remember what has happened. You shall remember that the Lord your God led you all these 40 years in the wilderness. Why? In that 40 years, before they even went, into the wanderings, they rejected the promise of God. In their own mind, they decided that their own knowledge and wisdom, their own understanding of the promised land is better than God. And so God was very angry. And God took them into 40 years into the wilderness. And that generation would die. And the generation that seated there listening to Moses are the ones that came out from those families that rejected going in. And Moses is bringing back those memories. Remember, memories are good, especially when God has taught us lessons. So when we give testimonies, I hope that someday we talk about those things that we had challenges, that we failed. And yet God picked us up. And in those times, what did God teach us? Not knowledge. Look at verse 2. To humble you and to test you. To know what was in your heart. Whether you would keep his commandments or not. You see, first things first. When they rejected going into the land, God put them into this test to humble them, to let them know who God is. It's not their knowledge, not their confidence in their eyesight, but it is to place confidence in God. Though we can't see, yet we believe. Unfortunately, they didn't. So God took this 40-year lesson to humble them, to lower them down so that they can accept and know the very fact in their relationship with God that God is greater, that we are not to trust only on our own understanding. God can see more, much more. But one of those things that God wants to know about their hearts, I'm here to tell you that God wants to know your heart, my heart, is to test us, to examine us, to put us into some examination like Abraham and Isaac offering him, to test us so that God can know our faith and our attitude of obedience. To know what was in their hearts, God wants to know what's in your heart. When God puts you to the test, He wants you to know how much do you trust God? How much do I trust God? How much did they trust God? And he went through 40 years of examinations of life. Perhaps this current period presents to us an environment of a test. How well do we know God? How well do we trust God? 
do we still trust him today? After all the things that's happened, good or bad? Look, God wants to know our hearts and mind, so he will test all of us. Just as he tested Job, he tested the Israelites for 40 years. We are to be open to God as an open book so that he knows exactly what we're thinking. We can't hide. But God tests us so that we can prove to him that we too will trust him. Will we trust God today? God tells us to cast our cares upon him. God tells us that he is the faithful God. There is nothing else that is faithful in this life that we have. Why? Because things keep changing. Faithfulness of God means he was faithful to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is faithful to the Israelites who take them into the promised land. He is faithful to you and I today. He is that same God, Jehovah. And to test us to keep his commandments, are we going to protect it? If we don't keep and protect God's word, now the next generation would not know God. That is why God wants us to keep his commandments. But I want us to look at verse 3 and that's where we draw a close. How do we learn to trust God in a changing environment? In a time where the new norm is something so new to us and it will be normal. It is expected to be normal and it might change again. Who knew that 2020, instead of positioning the country to be a fully developed nation, we are now looking at grappling at things, how to settle our lives. See, we will never know what's going to happen next year and the year after next. We can guess, yeah, we can guess. And we, we, we can guess very well that it may not be exactly how we are today. It could get worse or it could get better. Maybe there's a vaccine, maybe there's not, maybe there's something else. But one thing is for sure, God's word is to humble us. Look at verse 3. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, in times of this change, some of us might be affected in our jobs. We might have a salary cut. Some may even lose their jobs. Some businesses may be severely impacted and we need to look after each other. But these are times of uncertainty. But these times of uncertainty certainly test us about our faith. Yes, it's not God that set this in place, but God can use something like this to see whether you and I would trust him and keep his commandments. And by so doing, we know in our relationship with God that we are humbled, that we know that it is beyond us and we are on our knees all the time to pray to God to seek his face and to do his will. What would please him? So if we don't know his commandments, we can talk about pleasing him, but we will never do that, isn't it? So study the word of God. What he likes, what he doesn't. We do what he likes that pleases him, and we avoid those things that offends God. Then we will be blessed. Truly. Now, God's will is as simple as that. But for us to learn through hard times is to humble us. Well, God allowed them to hunger. Maybe some of us are hungry too. 
that we don't know, but I trust that we are all watching out for each other. But the Israelites went hungry and they complained to God. And God gave them manna. Well, manna comes from a Hebrew word. What is it? And they had that as bread. Replacement bread. But it kept them going for a long, long time. This is important. Because the next phrase that comes in verse 3 is this. Why did God allow them to hunger? Why did God allow us to go through such tough times like now? Now, if it's not tough for you, it's tough for many people. And I hope that we can empathize with them. But truly, think about it. These are tough times indeed. But in these times, God wants us to know. When we are hungry, God wants us to know. When the Israelites are hungry, God wanted them to know. So just as God wanted them to know, God wanted you and I to know today. That man shall not live by bread alone. It's not that man shall not live by bread. It's just that we don't depend on bread alone. It's not about making money to eat, making money to survive. It's not that. Yes, that's important. But that's not all. That's not all. And so by going hungry, the Israelites learned that God will give them more when they trust God and do what is pleasing in their sight. For us today, we learn that man shall not live by bread alone. This very morning, that eating and drinking, it's a favorite Hebrew pastime. It is our favorite pastime as well. But that's not the only thing in life. It's true. We all live, we study hard, we get good jobs. For what? For a better life. To have more to eat. But God is saying, man shall not live by bread alone. But man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of Jehovah. What does that mean? It means that even if you have nothing to eat, we can eat the words of God. We can trust the word of God. We can depend on the word of God that proceeds out of his mouth. This is what God says. And the Lord said this. We can trust that. And literally, the Im imagery, the video that plays in our minds when you hear these words, is to trust God. We can literally eat His words. Why? Because He will make it come true. Humbling us, and then we would turn to Him and says, God, help us. When you read His Bible, when you read His words, we thank God that we can depend on this God that we can't see. But He's truly real in our lives. And He will make straight our path. That we will be blessed we will be happy, we will be glad that our health is good, that our lives are guarded, and that what we ask for, it's not about the money. It's about our relationship with God. The more you know God, the more you know you have life. Life is not just eating. This is the current life. But we trust God and eat His words because that is eternal life. How much time do we spend on God's Word? We spend a lot of time looking for bread in this life. But how much time do we spend on eternal bread? The Word of God. Now, I've said a lot about the Word of God. You've heard me saying that, and you've heard many people saying that. And talking about the Word of God is, means nothing. But God is saying, but man shall live by every word that comes out of the mouth of the Lord, the mouth of Jehovah, so that when we study his words, so that we can keep his word and pass it down, that is what God wants us to do, to live by his word, to live with his word, to know his word is to know God. That's as simple as that. God gives us this life. 
we try to take care of this life the best we know how. The wisdom that he has given us. But if our focus is purely on what he has given us, we have missed the point. That's why God is saying, man shall not live by bread alone, but man shall live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Jehovah. Let us spend time with God's Word. If we spend time more with God in His Word, I assure you we will know God better. If our objective of reading the Bible is to know God, I guarantee you that we will know God much better. How much time do we spend playing games? How much time do we spend with the television, with the internet, with our phone, with Facebook, with Twitter? How much time do we spend at work, at play? And then we ask ourselves, how much time do we spend with God's Word? Man shall not live by bread alone, but man shall live by every word that proceeds out from the mouth of God. You see, that's all God is saying. There is no magic to studying God's Word. It's as plain as it can be. Now, unfortunately, the English may not give us all the nuances, so you may need to find help from people who can uncover the underlying text. But more importantly, if you have that desire, you will have a way, and God will open up a way. I trust that in this time of change, of uncertainty, the Israelites hung on to God's Word now, it wasn't because they just automatically learned that. They had to learn the hard way too. But you know, learning the hard way is hard. While we can, let us learn God's Word. Because while we are in the fire, it's hard to learn. It's easy to say to trust God when you are stepping in the fire. But while we're not in the fire, not just yet, I trust that you would have spent good time with God and His Word during this MCO period. Because that's the best time. It's captive time to know God. But if you haven't, we should start now. The uncertain times ahead requires us to draw near to God, to know His words, to know who He is. See, His words actually tell us who He is, what He likes, what He doesn't like, so that we can do what we will please Him and we will avoid all those that will offend Him. Deuteronomy is a beautiful book. We've just looked at Deuteronomy chapter 8, three verses. But there is so much in it because God wants to immerse us into His Word so that we know God as Moses did. It is not difficult, only if we are willing. And that will help us move forward in the rest of this year and in the year to come in 2021, when we really don't know what to expect, let us hang on to God's words. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will make straight your path. It comes from the scripture. We memorize that, but let's put that into action. I'm sure all of us would have been encouraged and exhorted day in, day out. Read God's Word. But I encourage you, read it with a purpose to keep it, preserve it, to know it, but more importantly, to know the relationship with God and that we can pass it down to the next generation. May God help us. May God bless us through this time and bless your study of God's Word. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your words and your words is truth. We pray, Lord, that you would guide us and lead us as a lamp unto our feet and to a light unto our path. That in everything we do and say, Lord, that we know what would please you. Help us see that and that we do that. And help us also see what would offend you. That we stay away from evil. Just as David has prayed, Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin or offend you. Help us, O Lord. 
And we pray this. Amen.